Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about how to maintain your water-cooled PCs and how to do a coolant flush. So as you can see, this is my beautiful water-cooled system. Both the CPU and the GPU are under our custom loop and over about the span of a year, the system gets a little bit gunky and a little bit of residue likes to form up in the reservoir. So we're going to clean that out today. When I zoom into my reservoir here, you can see there's a little bit of foam and a little bit of gunk on the plastic inside of the reservoir, and we're gonna try to get as much of that stuff out. I usually use a mixture of distilled water and vinegar when I do my coolant flushes, but I saw EK was selling their loop cleaner, so we're gonna give that a try today and see how the results are. And I thought because I'm doing a coolant flush, I might as well replace the thermal paste. So we're gonna be using Cryonauts Thermal Grizzly and replacing that on top of my CPU. For the coolant, we're gonna to switch to a clear coolant color because it looks more like water and I thought that might be cooler and then we're going to install this Bryce key electric flow meter and thermometer which measures the temperature of the coolant as well as the flow rate which is very important in case the pump fails then we can't forget about the distilled water so combined here we have about eight liters and we're going to push all of it through our system just to make sure everything's squeaky clean the first thing we're going to do is connect our 24 pin jumper to the power supply so that when we turn on the power supply, the PC will instantly turn on and the pump will run at 100%, allowing us to flush the system. If you don't have a jumper, you can just short the pins with a paper clip, but most power supplies will come with this jumper. Second, using this spare piece of soft tubing, I can connect it to my drain valve to help empty out the old coolant, but we have to open the reservoir to allow air to push the coolant out. This will get most of the coolant out of the reservoir, but not much out anywhere else. So we're going to have to carefully tilt the system to get out as much of the coolant as we can from the radiators, the CPU block, and the GPU. I try to tilt it on every axis for the best results. Then, my first objective is to change the thermal paste on the CPU, so I place the chassis vertically so that none of the remaining liquid can come out on the motherboard. And after removing the fittings on the CPU block and then the screws, I can remove the cooler. Now, using isopropanol alcohol, I can clean off the old thermal paste off of the CPU water block and then the CPU itself. and using my new thermal paste, I apply a small amount, then I can reinstall the water block. My second objective is to install this flow meter, and I chose to install it right at the beginning of my loop to monitor the flow rate right from the pump. But to install it, I'm gonna have to cut my old tubing and splice it in between. So to cut the tubing, I have to use my PTG tubing cutter, which is a simple to use tool for anyone to use. All you have to do is place the tubing in between the wheel and the blade and slowly tighten it as you spin the tubing around. After around 30 or 20 turns, it should cut through, but we still have to deburr the cut pieces. Using my reamer, I can clean out both the insides and the outsides to make sure it is watertight and the fittings will have a good seal. Now that our pieces are measured and cut, we can fit them in along with our new flow meter and resume the flushing process. The flow meter uses a Molex connection, so we have to make sure it's plugged in to make sure that it's working. I've set up a piece of tubing over a bucket for easy draining, and I'm going to start filling the PC with distilled water and having it run for three to five minutes, then draining it. The EK Flush Kit comes with one bottle of their loop cleaner and one bottle of their super flush. And because these are very concentrated, they need to be diluted. And since I didn't want to use all of it in one shot, I reduced their ratios by half to use half of the bottles. My game plan was then simple. Fill my loop with the EK loop cleaner first and let it run for about eight hours. This lets it get into all the radiators and all the blocks and clean everything very thoroughly. Then I plan to drain it and fill it with the EK Super Flush as a secondary cleaner and let this run for about 8 hours as well. 
Then I plan to drain it and run some distilled water through it to get any remnants out and then add my coolant. So you guys can enjoy the montage of me doing this because this takes a while. After using the flush kit and filling with distilled water, you can see the difference to know that everything worked out perfectly. To take this a step further, I could have also taken apart the reservoir, the GPU block, and the CPU block and given it a thorough cleaning, but I'll probably save that for next flush as I'm planning to get a new motherboard and CPU, so I'll have to replace some of the blocks anyways. All in all, this flush wasn't difficult and it's a good way to maintain your water cooling components and their performances. And these kind of flushes are very important, if not mandatory, if you're changing your coolant color because you don't want the past colors to affect the new colors you're putting in. Alright guys, thanks for watching this video and if you liked it, please leave a comment and subscribe. Till next time, see you around.